Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John. I uh, noticed the red pyramids as we celebrate the, uh, the festival of Pentecost. Uh, also, a few other announcements. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we, well, we are moving to, for the month of June, Divine Service Setting 1. So if you want to follow along in the hymnal, that's page 151, but it should be printed in your bulletin as well. Uh, also, uh, this Sunday, we welcome, uh, a bit belatedly, but no time better than the present, uh, new members who have joined us here uh, by transfer or by individual instruction uh, since basically May of 2020. So that'll come up a bit later in the service. Uh, also, we, from our voters meeting on Wednesday night, we co extended calls to two teachers, Hannah Meckes and Joe Holcomb. So we will lift them up in prayer. And then also one more, one more announcement, Pastor Luke. Uh, which I'm okay. sure most of you already know by now. But uh, It's a good one, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to share with my church family some good news, big news for my life. Um, last week, I went to see my girlfriend, and I proposed to her, and she said yes. So. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, just so to kind of answer some questions now, uh, uh, Courtney and I are getting married in October in Missouri, and she's moving here. I'm not moving anywhere. So, <laughs> so, so thank you for all your prayers and support. Uh, excited to bring her here to be part of our, our uh, church family here. Uh, with that, why don't we go ahead and greet one another and, uh, as we prepare to sing our opening hymn. We sing our opening hymn 913, uh, O Holy Spirit, enter in.
I invite you to stand for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. 
So the Lord dispersed from the, them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this time the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. 
For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine but the fathers who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn of the day, 501, Come Down, O Love Divine.
you, sisters and brothers in Christ, peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So I enjoy the old TV show Hogan's Heroes. The show itself is a comedy, but its context lies within Germany during World War II. The main character, Colonel Hogan, and his men are allied prisoners of war in a German POW camp. However, even though they're prisoners, the premise of the show is that they're actually carrying out covert missions for the Allies as prisoners of war. Even though they're locked up in the camp, they're actually quite capable of leaving the prison at any time. They have tunnels and other means of exiting the camp, and they do so to carry out missions against the Germans. From the prison camp, they carry out all sorts of clandestine operations secretly destroying German weapons, reporting enemy troop movements, disrupting Nazi communications, rescuing Allied troops, and a whole host of other secret missions. Their mission overall is to interfere with German war efforts in any way they can from deep behind enemy lines, staging their operations from the POW camp. Well, as Christians, we are, in a way, like Colonel Hogan and his men. We are living in a simple world, living behind enemy lines, so to speak. And as God's people, we carry out God's mission in this world. However, our methods are quite different from that of Hogan and his soldiers. We don't use violence, destruction, or deception to combat the enemy. God has given us weapons that are very different from the world's weapons. And one of those weapons that I want to focus on today is that of peace. Now, it may sound counterintuitive, peace as a weapon, but it's one of the gifts that God gives his people both for their own good and for the good of the world. In order to better understand how we wield peace as a weapon, let's turn to our gospel reading. Well, John 14 takes place the night Jesus was betrayed. He's celebrating the Passover with his disciples and taking the opportunity to teach them. In our appointed text for today, Jesus promises his disciples the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in his name. It's fitting that this is our gospel reading for today as we are celebrating Pentecost, that mysterious event in Acts 2 where the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and enabled them to preach the gospel of Jesus in a myriad of languages, resulting in 3,000 baptisms. The day of Pentecost, then, is one fulfillment of Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit to the disciples in John 14. Another fulfillment of Jesus' Jesus's promise is found in John chapter 20, where the resurrected Christ appeared to the disciples in the locked room and breathed upon them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. The sending and receiving of the Holy Spirit and the subsequent work of the Spirit is all bound up in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The Holy Spirit concerns himself with connecting people to Jesus. He does this through the means of grace, God's word, the forgiveness of sins, and the sacraments. The promise and the reception of the Holy Spirit is a good and precious gift for God's people, for us. For you also have received the Holy Spirit. In the waters of holy baptism, in conjunction with the Word of God, the Spirit created faith in you, connecting you to Christ. And your baptism, then, was yet another fulfillment of Jesus' promise in John 14. In receiving the Spirit, we receive the Spirit's many gifts. Faith in Christ, forgiveness of sins, life, salvation, the fruits of the Spirit, just to name a few. I find it interesting, however, that both here in John 14 and in John 20, the promise and the reception of the Holy Spirit is closely connected to the gift of Jesus' peace. In John 20, prior to breathing the Spirit upon the disciples, twice the resurrected Lord told the disciples, Peace be with you. And in John 14, immediately after promising the Spirit, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Holy Spirit 
is all about connecting people to Jesus. And it's only through the Spirit that one receives the peace that Jesus gives. And through your baptism, through the ongoing hearing of the gospel, through the body and blood of Christ, the Holy Spirit has given you and continues to give you Jesus' peace. But what exactly is the peace that Jesus gives? For Jesus himself distinguishes his peace from any form of peace that the world might give. He says, not as the world do I give to you. For peace, like many other biblical terms, words like love or hope, is employed by the world that on the surface may sound good, is actually quite different from how Jesus uses such terms. For example, peace is periodically used as a political buzzword, or it's reduced to mere inner feelings. Neither of these may be inherently bad, but ultimately they're not the same sort of peace that Christ gives. For peace politicized by the world or peace that I may experience as an emotion are entirely subjective. They may be good, but they don't last and are only fleeting. The peace of Christ, however, is an objective peace. It is the objective peace. It's not a buzzword or a feeling, but an objective gift from God, an objective status before God an objective identity granted by God. For the peace that Jesus gives is peace with God. It's a peace that restores the relationship between holy God and sinful human. It's a peace that declares you to be forgiven of your sins. It's a peace that surpasses all human understanding and feelings. It's a peace that you have regardless of your life circumstances. You have this peace whether or not you feel at peace. And it's a peace that's attained only through Jesus. And it's only through the work of the Spirit that a person can receive this objective peace. For it's only through faith in Christ that we have this peace. It's only by faith that we can truly believe that such peace actually exists. As the baptized, as those who belong to Christ, you most assuredly have this obje objective gift of Jesus' peace. And so this peace comes to us vertically from God, but this peace doesn't or shouldn't remain trapped within us. The peace we receive from Christ through the Holy Spirit should flow out horizontally into the world around us. As the baptized, Jesus has tasked us to share the peace we received with the world. As recipients of Christ's peace, we are agents of his peace. We live in the world as agents of peace. Look at Jesus' life. He himself was an agent of peace. And consider what he did throughout his ministry. He healed sicknesses, drove out demons, calmed storms, provided food, and forgave sins. Jesus gave peace through his words and actions through his ministry, presence, and interactions with sinful, broken people. Jesus spoke and lived out peace. In a dark and violent world, Jesus was and is the Prince of Peace. And consider all the ways that Jesus spoke and enacted peace, specifically in the events of his passion. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he commanded Peter to put away his sword. In the trials before the Sanhedrin and Pilate, he mostly kept silent, refraining from getting defensive. When the soldiers mocked and tortured him, he did not retaliate. On the cross, he pleaded with the Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. He spoke words of peace to one of the criminals, promising him eternal life. Even in the dark and evil events of Jesus' passion, he remained the agent of peace, bringing the peace of God into the heart of human darkness. Even in his death, Jesus was the agent of peace. He submitted to the pangs of death, but he victoriously rose again from the dead. And now there is peace, even in death, for all who belong to Christ. And through water and the word, the Holy Spirit has connected us to the life, death, and ministry of Christ. He's connected us to Jesus' peace. 
He's connected us to the agent of true and lasting peace. For what the Spirit began on Pentecost, he's continuing to do through the life of the church, through the lives of God's people, through us. The Spirit is tirelessly transforming us into agents of Christ's peace. And by connecting us to the one who gives true peace, the Spirit is making us agents of peace. We live in a dark world full of sin and evil and brokenness. However, we have in those dark and evil things, we have countless opportunities to speak and enact Jesus' peace in the midst of this world's sin and darkness. In a way, we live, work, and play behind enemy lines. We're citizens of God's kingdom, yes, but we live as citizens of God's kingdom in the world. For the world still belongs to God, and he's actively reclaiming it from the forces of evil. And as Christians, we participate in God's ongoing work to reclaim the world. And one way that we participate in God's mission is to live as the agents of peace that he's made us to be. We're God's agents who operate behind enemy lines. But unlike Colonel Hogan and his soldiers who carried out their missions behind enemy lines via espionage and sabotage, we, as God's people, carry out God's mission by speaking and enacting the peace of Jesus. We do this by living and speaking as those who have the peace from God, objective peace that remains true regardless of our circumstances or the hardships and difficulties we experience. And we do not have to be the agents of the world's ways. We don't have to be agents of anger or violence, harsh words or gossip, bitterness or resentment, distrust or dissatisfaction, jealousy, greed, or lust. Instead, we can be the agents of peace, the agents that God has made us to be. And being agents of peace can take on countless forms in the lives of Christians. It can be simply caring or raising, patiently raising your family to love and obey Jesus. It can be simply caring for your spouse who is afflicted with a physical or mental disease. It can be working as a faithful and honest employer or employee. It can be biting your tongue when you wish to speak ill of someone. It can be offering a word of peace in the midst of conflict or argument. It can be being kind and courteous to the workers of the restaurants and stores we shop at. It can be speaking to the classmate that no one likes. It can be devoting your time to prayer when you are unable to leave your home anymore praying for peace in your family, church, nation, and the world. It can simply be asking for forgiveness when you've wronged someone. Or it can be speaking the words, I forgive you to someone who's wronged us. There truly are countless ways that we can be and already are agents of the Prince of Peace in this world. In being agents of peace, God is at work in this world through our words and actions. Living as, living as Christ's agents of peace is certainly difficult. After all, the world did crucify the Prince of Peace. And the world still often rejects the peace that Jesus offers. But Christ's promise remains even when others reject his peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. It takes courage and compassion to be agents of peace. Jesus' gift of peace remains for those who follow him. For blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. The band DC Talk has a song that speaks to living as agents of Christ's peace. In the, in the refrain of their song, Chance, they say, Every day we live, there's a chance to give. Every time we speak, there's a chance for peace. Every day we live, there's a chance. Indeed, as the baptized, we have countless chances to be the agents of peace the Holy Spirit is making us to be. For Christ has and continues to give you his true and lasting peace. Amen.
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now by confessing the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, uh, I'd like to invite at this time to come forward all the uh, new members who have joined us in the last year and a half, and I think many of you have received messages on that, so to come forward now, everyone else may be seated. <coughs> and you can gather up here uh, facing me, here, just stay on the, down there, but face forward toward me. The peace of the Lord be with you. I learned that in the sermon. That's right. So, uh, it is it is a good thing, and we um, we are starting again to formally acknowledge uh, and publicly receive new members in the body of Christ here at St. John Indy, um, whom the Holy Spirit has led to us either by transfer or profession of faith, uh, individual instruction. Our guiding statement is cultivating Christ's community through courageous discipleship and compassionate action. And it is the Holy Spirit who is the one who is at work cultivating, connecting us to God and to one another. Uh, and so we rejoice that, that you, here you see a number uh, of, of men and women, but also that, that 38 new members have been brought here uh, in the last year and a half. And so now I'll ask you all, and I told you, you wouldn't have to do anything that's too challenging, not even any feats of strength. Uh, you can, if you would like, and reminder to you all, after this we will have a reception with some donuts uh, after the service. You can arm wrestle for donuts if you want, or something like that. Okay. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works in all his ways? If so, say, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father, and I hope you do, you just confess this in the Apostles' Creed, but a reminder. Do you believe in God the Father, Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, say, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As you have already been doing, and we rejoice in this, but do you continue, intend to... Uh, continue to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, then answer, I do, by the grace of God. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has given you? If so, say, I will, with the help of God. And we rejoice. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge now publicly that you are members here of St. John Lutheran Church. So continue to receive the Lord's Supper or be catechized up to that point uh, to do that and to participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I invite you to, uh, well, no, let us pray. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I don't want to embarrass you. I just want to have you just turn around. You don't have to say anything. I'm just going to have you turn around and face uh, out here, everyone out here, since I know who you all are. And so uh, we welcome again Bob and Linda Holcomb, Michelle Husky, Jamie McCormick, John Wally, Sarah, Stan, Henry, Evelyn is Evelyn right there, Lucy Lemon, Jay and Nancy Cherry, Amy Rohde, and Pastor Paul Klupke. And Julie is not here today, so uh, let's we'll clap for a welcome. Uh, You may return to your seats, and I invite everyone to stand. Uh, oh, no, no, you're not. No, no. You may. No, go. Please go to your seats. That is fine. You can go to your seats. We've never done this before. And now is as a, a hello, and the peace of the Lord be with you, as well as that today is uh, Thomas Winterstein's last uh, Sunday with us as our director of parish music, and rejoice in that. So uh, as a hello, as well as a Godspeed to the Winterstein family, the choir now. I forgot about it. I'm glad Pastor Luke has seen ministry. The choir is going to sing a, a benediction as a welcome as well as a farewell uh, to the Wintersteins. <laughs> Please stand for the prayer of the church. Let us pray. O gracious Lord, we rejoice that your Holy Spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all that Christ has said and done and continues to do for us. We rejoice and pray that you would continue to comfort us with divine peace that passes understanding, and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. We thank you that your Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies your church, that you have brought uh, all of us to this place, and we thank you for those new brothers and sisters in Christ who are a part of our fellowship in the last year and a half. We also pray that you would bless and keep Thomas and Jill and Ada, Ada Winterstein as they travel uh, and, and continue to serve in your harvest field in Michigan. Lord, we also know as you provide for your church and you once chose apostles to proclaim the resurrection, that you would open the mouths of your pastors and all your people to declare his praises to all who hear. We thank you as you have 
uh, provide workers for this harvest field and trust that you will continue to guide your servants Brandon and Hannah and Joe as they consider calls to serve at St. John Lutheran School. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies. Bring peace to the nations and prosper the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, our governor, Congress, legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all, with a heart of mercy for the weak and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of compassion, forget not the sick and the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will. We pray for all those who've requested our prayers, but especially lift up Karen Smith as she anticipates surgery. Give Karen and all those whom we entrust to your care confidence to know that you know their need and will well supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming when all affliction will come to an end and you will grant the perfect consummation to us and all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. So prepare us now to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith and for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness, that the peace and the love that we have received and know from you, that we will also share that peace and love with others that is centered in Christ. Nourish and feed us, that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that through your word that you would continue to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and defend us against every error that we might continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us, by his death, obtain eternal salvation. We pray these things through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Uh, again, we welcome you. Please fill out the card in the seat at the pew, letting us know you're here in worship. We gather now our tithes and offerings.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, which he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
This eating and drinking of Christ's body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in both body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in the peace of Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.